Hi everyone, we're going to do a little demonstration today of keyframes in Adobe Premiere. So here I've got um, a very short little video clip made of images uh, for fruits. Um, and what I'm going to do is add some keyframes to add some animation to these still images. So let's look ahead at my blueberries image here. And as you can see, it's got some black bars. So automatically I might know I want to resize that a little bit, which I can do in the same way. So as long as I have um, activated the effect controls here, um, this will show up for that clip. So if I double click this normally, it'll show up here. I can kind of zoom through um, the clip that's on my timeline, but in a more controlled way. And in particular, I can add these effect controls. So this automatically gives me um, motion, opacity, and time remapping. The things we're gonna use today are all under motion. We've got position, scale, um, rotation, anchor point, we're mostly going to use position and scale. And scale in particular, you don't have to use keyframes to use these effects. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and bring up scale. I can either type it in manually, say 120, that'll make it bigger. You can see how that affects it over here on my timeline. You want to make sure that your playhead is over that image um, in your timeline so you can see what's happening over here in your playback window. I can also kind of just, if I don't click on it, you can also just kind of drag it around and make it bigger and smaller, and that's kind of nice. Um, so you can see how it's how it's affecting it immediately. So let's say I just want it to, to fill the frame. That looks great. But let's say I also want to add some kind of zoom effect as well. To do that, I'm going to have to turn on these toggle animation buttons. So this is kind of the trickiest part because they make all these buttons super tiny. Um, but if I click on this little button here by scale, it now turns blue, gives me the little stopwatch icon, and I now am able to activate keyframes. It automatically makes a keyframe where I had my playhead. I don't necessarily want one there, but we can deal with that later. So where I want one is the very beginning of this frame, and it's really hard to hit exactly the first frame of the image. I use the arrow keys to be able to make sure here's the last frame of the banana's image, here's the first frame of the blueberry's image, and I'm going to click this little add keyframe button here to add one at the very beginning. I'm going to do this again at the end of the image. And again, I'm going to get pretty close to the end, and then I'm going to use my arrow keys to make sure that I'm exactly on the last frame of the blueberries, not accidentally on the first frame of cherries or on the second to last frame of blueberries, because then it won't work as smoothly. So I'm again going to click this add remove keyframe button and now you can see I have keyframes both at the beginning of this image and at the end. I also have this one in the middle and to toggle or navigate between them I can use these little arrow buttons and it jumps me between the keyframes which is going to be really useful. And in particular I don't really want this one in the middle. We want to be able to have a smooth animation from beginning to end so when I'm using the arrows I can jump to that one in the middle and hit the remove keyframe button to delete that. Now I just have one at the beginning and one at the end. Right now if I play this it will look exactly the same because the scale that we've set for the first one is exactly the same as the scale that we have set for the second one. But now I'm going to change that. So I've navigated over to my second keyframe that I already set up and now I'm going to just increase that to some extent. Um, again you can type in the number or you can just drag it to see what looks good. And now, if I play that, it will zoom. And it zooms smoothly over the duration of that entire image before jumping to the next one. Um, if I wanted to be able to change it, you know, the amount that it's zooming, I can jump to that last keyframe and adjust it. What I also want to do is add um, position to this as well. So I can change not only the scale, but kind of where it's zooming to. So I'm going to activate the position keyframe button. And now it automatically puts one where I was at the time that I activated that. So now we have one at the end. I want to be able to have a matching keyframe for position at the beginning. So what I'm going to do under scale, I already know I have one at the beginning of this image. So I'm going to jump there. And now the playhead is in the same place. I'm going to add one for position. So now I have two matching sets of keyframes for both position and scale. And at the beginning, everything looks good, so I'm going to jump back to the second one, and this is where I can change um, the, let's say I want to focus on, on this blueberry with the leaves. I can adjust that so that this will be the ending position. I can adjust it vertically too if I want. 
Now if I go back and play, it will adjust both in scale and in position. It's pretty subtle because it goes over the entire thing, but you can see how um, you can also do it much more quickly or with different kind of effects. Um, and this is often known as the Ken, Burn, Ken Burns effect because it works really nicely in historical documentaries if you're trying to like zoom in on somebody's face or something. Real quickly, I'm just going to do this with the cherries one as well here. Um, I'm going to change the scale to make that fit. And again, I can do the keyframes right to the beginning. First frame of cherries, turn on scale, add a keyframe. It did one automatically, so I guess I have to do one back. Now we're going to go to the end of that image. Make sure with the arrow keys that we're on exactly the last frame of that image. Now we have two keyframes. I'm going to adjust the scale. We'll make this one pretty dramatic so we can really see how much it's zooming in. And now you can see that that one's zooming in as well.